Intelligence is a form of trait of traits, and what that means is it combines multiple personality traits in one category or one group of personality traits. So intelligence is not just one thing, but it is a multiple set of things. And that means the super intelligent person that I talked about in my previous video is unique because they possess most or all of these personality traits. That means they are intelligent in more than one dimension. That means their intelligence is so high that it is manifested in multiple different areas at the same time. While most people are intelligent in some way, for example, you can be a remarkably creative or you can be extremely good at pattern recognition or learning. Or you could be very imaginative and good at daydreaming and seeing things before you. Or you could be very intellectual. But just being one of these things is not enough to classify you as super intelligent or remarkably intelligent. It can mean that you are intelligent but primarily in one particular dimension. So most people have a specialization. That means yeah, they are not always intelligent in all situations, they're not always going to be brilliant, but they are going to be brilliant at something. Most people are brilliant at something, and that's enough. It's enough to be brilliant at something. You don't have to be intelligent in every single dimension of your life, and perhaps you don't even want to be, considering the problems that super intelligent people can have in day-to-day -day life. So, intelligence is a combination of yeah, your degree of intellectualism, which is your ability to approach and understand the world theoretically and intellectually rather than personally. It is your imaginativity and it's your ability to daydream vividly, to have a complex inner world, to have deep or nuanced ways of expressing feelings or values or beliefs or ideas. It can be to have an exceptionally high speed of pattern recognition, being faster than average at learning, taking in new information, understanding concepts, understanding ideas faster than most people. It can also be your uh, conceptualization or theoretical intelligence. It can be your ability to uh, formulate a concept or a name or a theory to explain uh, some kind of personal phenomena or some kind of situation or experience that you've had. It can be, as I mentioned earlier, creativity, which is your ability to come up with multiple solutions to a problem, or your ability to think of different synonyms or alternatives or ideas to apply in a different situations. And of course, intelligence can also be your ability to formulate a vision or some kind of concept of the future. It is basically associated with your ability to predict and speculate on the future and what is going to happen long term. So it can be your ability to engage in long term prediction. So intellect, intellect intelligence is all of these things come together as one. That's why most of the brilliant, intelligent people that we recognize from history, you know, the Da Vinci's, the Steve Jobs, the Elon Musk's, they are not just visionaries, but they are also creatives. They are not just intellectuals, but they are also incredibly imaginative. They are not only going to be strong in pattern recognition, but they're also going to be good at conceptualization. Coming up with a nice buzzword concept or word or campaign or idea that will basically sell or put out or help channel their imagination and intuition. So that's what's exceptional about these types. And you know, with these types, what's really interesting is it's really hard for these types to tell which form of intuition they possess. Is their intuition extroverted or is it introverted? Is it judging or is it perceiving? A lot of time when you have such a strong preference for intuition, when you are so focused, when you are so excellent in so many dimensions of uh, intuitive thought, you don't have a strong preference for either of these personality traits. And really the only way you can tell which type you are and which uh, personality type is your home state is uh, to truly look at what comes first and what comes out in flow and what your starting point is and what you get 
most calm and what your pursuit is long term you like what are you looking for you can be exceptionally creative but you are always moving towards closure you can see multiple patterns but you are always looking for that one particular pattern that one big idea so beyond this often these types you know these super intuitives these super intelligent types they're interesting from a cognitive function aspect because while they possess almost every single form of intuition possible they might lack other forms of cognitive functions they might struggle in other dimensions they might for example struggle with telling if they are feeling or thinking types it might be difficult for them to know whether they are uh, some kind of logical type or some kind of emotionally based type because often they are able to interweave both together they are, in that sense of the word, double deciders, or people that uh, come at the decision from multiple angles, looking both at their personal values and what is smart and what is realistic and what is logical from uh, some kind of intellectual or uh, practical standpoint. Often, uh, these types can easily tell they are not sensing types. They can easily tell that they are kind of impractical, that they can struggle in social situations, that they can be a bit clumsy, that they can uh, be a bit unrealistic, that they sometimes lose themselves in a dream world, that they struggle with uh, being and paying attention to in class, in school, to other people. You know, they notice that they have all these problems related to sensing just as they notice that they have all these uh, unique traits and abilities when it comes to intuition. So they are just as aware of the fact that they, they are intelligent or fast at learning, but they also are deeply aware that they are stupid in the sense that they are kind of unpractical, that they think too big, that they struggle to be specific, that they struggle with attention to detail, that they struggle with follow through, self-discipline, you know, all those things, you know, keeping in steady night rhythm, going to bed at the same day, time every day, you know, all those things can come difficult to the super intuitive type. So, When you think of intelligence, what you have to do is you have to separate the idea of intelligence in a classic sense from the idea of intelligence as an ability. You know, there are people like Howard Gardner in psychology that have made the argument that intelligence is more or less the same as ability. Intelligence is how good you are at cooking, or it can be how good you are at music, or it can be how good you are at mathematics. So intelligence can mean different things to different people. It can be a bit an ability, a trait, something anybody is good at and if we see intelligence in this way intelligence is the same as a cognitive function if uh, we think of intelligence as uh, music or as interpersonal skills or as self-awareness or as any form of ability you know that a human can possess uh, it is essentially something similar to a cognitive function it's an attempt to divide different ways of thinking different abilities different thinking patterns different styles but if you think of intelligence in a classic sense this is uh, really interesting then you're looking at a specific set of personality traits six particular traits you're looking at the ability to develop a concept of the future a vision for the long term it's uh, intuitive judging or it's creativity which is uh, your ability to think of things from different angles or perspectives or to conceptualize different options it is conceptualization which is being able to uh, group a set of ideas together uh, in one package to say this idea this bigger picture this plan this project this concept this car this uh, uh, new recipe uh, it's basically introverted intuition or it's uh, something novel or it's something new or something that relates to our ability to see new possibilities and new ideas so basically pattern recognition or extroverted intuition so either we think of intelligence in the broad sense of an ability or we think about it in a specific sense as uh, a set of abilities related to intuition and that's what I like to do. I think I want to think of intelligence as 
a specific set of abilities related to intuition. It's a definition of things that we can do thanks to the use of intuition, where grit is a sense of what uh, different abilities that we can use and engage in related to sensing. I said that the superintuitive type is a person that tends to possess almost every form of intuition. They, while a super feeler, for example, might say, yeah, I can be intuitive in this way, I can be really creative, I can be this, but I'm not really that, I'm not so strong in pattern recognition, I can get lost in new ideas, and I uh, can struggle with, uh, you know, uh, more intellectual approaches to things, I'm more personal. The super intuitive will say, yeah, I can be intellectual at times and other times I can be very personal and empathetic. I can be this or I can be that. And this can cause a misconception. It can cause the misconception that you're good at everything. Because you can be intellectual or because you can be very imaginative, you assume you are really good at both. But in reality, you're mediocre at both or you're decent at both. Just because you are functional in something, just because you are a functional, logical thinker, logical processor, does not mean you are super logical or super rational. The super rational type is very different from the super intuitive type, just as the super feeling type is very different from the super intuitive type. So you have to see the extreme version of a personality trait in relation to the average version of a personality trait to truly understand the range of your abilities and your unique specializations and interests. Most people have a unique specialization or interest, so most people are one of these things, not the other. And that's why we can talk about things like subtypes, that's why I can say that I'm an intuitive subtype INFJ, just as there are introverted subtype INFJs, or feeling subtype INFJs, or judging subtype INFJs. And in saying I'm an intuitive subtype INFJ, I'm saying that, uh, yes, I am exceptionally intelligent, but I struggle in other dimensions where other INFJs are better specialized. I struggle in more empathetic areas or areas that require more collaborative or agreeable or uh, social strategies. I struggle in, more in areas that require more control and more focus and more discipline. I struggle in areas that require more self-control and stability and groundedness. I struggle in areas that require a lot of introversion. I can say that, yeah, because I am super intuitive, I am kind of an outgoing introvert. And I'm kind of a chaotic judging type, in a sense that, yeah, so many ideas and I have so many things I want to achieve and so many possibilities and I'm constantly wrestling so many theories and perspectives that uh, sometimes for me it's hard for me to maintain discipline and organization around me. Sometimes I am failing in a classic trait of judging and that's why in some personality tests I test as perceiving. Just as in some personality tests I can test as extroverted. But in reality, it's because uh, my intuition is so high and so unbalanced in relation to other personality traits. So, it's not enough to figure out your personality type by uh, looking at these things. And it can make it very difficult to test accurately on a personality test. I mean, I can find myself fooling myself that I'm more extroverted than I am because I can be extroverted. I can find myself fooling myself that I am more perceiving than I am just because I can be perceiving. And just because you are good at something does not mean that you are something. So one classic way of telling it all apart is separate what you are good at from what you enjoy and what you like. So you don't have to be the personality type that you are good at being. You don't have to do something just because you are good at it. This is something I've had to learn in work. I have been good at a lot of things and people have been asking me to do a lot of things because I am good at them. But I have had to learn that I should do things that I enjoy. So I should say no to a task. Even though I know I'm qualified to do it, I should say no to it so that I can prioritize doing what I really love. And um, yeah, part of it is I really love intuition. 
I really love creativity and creativity is perhaps the absolute most defining personality trait that I have and it is the thing that uh, dominates my life, my wake every waking moment that pursuit of wisdom and insight and understanding is uh, my predominant biggest concern in life and that might sound horrible and obsessive and I don't know what but it is the truth uh, and uh, sometimes it's a problem and sometimes it's something I'm really annoyed and frustrated with but it's also what has allowed me to get where I am today and uh, I'm happy with where I am today we just hit 20,000 subscribers do you realize what a huge milestone that is with regards to other things I'm doing I really feel comfortable with where I am right now with my website with my writing with uh, everything that's going on in my life I'm reasonably happy in those dimensions and I feel truly fulfilled by, by what I do and uh, when it comes to intuition there are other areas in life I still need to work a lot on but at least that's something I know I love and appreciate in myself and uh, yeah if you can find one thing just even just one little thing you like about yourself or appreciate in yourself I think that's a good start to self-acceptance and to empowerment and confidence so that's the super intuitive type for you I hope it helped you understand um, what I'm trying to do here and how I approach intelligence and if you agree with me let me know in the comments down below thanks for watching and see you all in the next video